The UFC has been on quite a roll these past few years. While most sports dialed it back due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the top five promotion set itself apart by putting on one mega event after another and one fight of the year candidate after the next. We have been spoiled these past few years, plain and simple. Every time that I step right here, I'm gonna give everything I have. They gotta kill me, but I'm not gonna stop. Living up to the hype set forth by the company and the fans is a big task. And while we have seen a fair number of duds and anticipated matchups, there are just as many fights that lived up to the expectations and even surpassed them by a country mile. There is nothing better in the world than getting your money's worth, and a good fight not only rewards the fan, but adds credibility to the company and elevates the status of the competing athletes regardless of winners and runner-ups. This business hinged upon hype and compelling matchups, and thankfully, we have had no shortage of incredible contest. Welcome to the fighting business. I'm glad to have you back on the channel. To hear my more personalized takes on the world of combat sports, my unfiltered opinion and definitely some biased truth, come vibe with me on the TFB's talks where we sit down and discuss all your favorite topics. I hope to catch you over there. But with that being said, strap on as we take on the sequel of the five fights that lived up to expectations and look at five more recent examples of fights that with no surprise blew everyone's mind and went exactly as advertised. Number one, Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. All right, guys, official prediction. Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. There's a lot to say here. Max Holloway is regarded as one of the best fighters on planet Earth, and he is as entertaining as he is skillful. He said he intends to throw a thousand strikes in a five-round fight. Bless rebounded from his two losses with an uncomfortably dominating performance against Calvin Cater. Hey, Dana, that's 50K. No worry, no worry, Kato. We got 50k, baby. That's what's up. And despite rumblings of a possible third fight with Volkanovski, the company booked him a fight against Yair Rodriguez at UFC Fight Night 197. The potential matchup was a dream come true for striking purist, because as Holloway himself had said, he was the best boxer in the company. And on the other side, Rodriguez was regarded by many as one of the finest kickers in the sport. Yeah, Rodriguez is doing stuff we've never seen anybody else do before. More importantly, in addition to being technically brilliant and superbly creative, these two were well conditioned and perfectly capable of brawling it out until the final horn. And that is exactly what happened. Holloway was a former world champion in the featherweight division, but his opponent stood toe to toe with him throughout the entire fight. And despite outlanding Rodriguez by a significant margin, Holloway was busted up, courtesy of an elbow that opened up a cut in the fifth round of the fight. In the end, the former champion outlasted Rodriguez and won a decision victory. The two fighters were not seen in the post-fight conference as they were sent straight to the hospital after a fight that was as bloody as it was entertaining. This was the second consecutive fight of the night for both Holloway and Rodriguez, and that pretty much tells you all you need to know about the story of this fight. Number 2. Corey Sanhagen versus Peter Young. I love this fight. It's an exciting fight, maybe even more exciting than the original Peter fight. Peter Young's always had a chip on his shoulder, but after his controversial disqualification loss to Aljamain Sterling in their first encounter, that chip grew into a 2x4. The informal champion of the bantamweight division sought an immediate rematch, but Sterling was sidelined due to lingering neck issues, and consequently, the company set up an interim title fight between the former champion and top contender Corey Sanhagen. Sanhagen was coming off a thrilling encounter against a returning TJ Dillashaw, and as he had demonstrated in his fight against the former champion, Sanhagen was one of the finest strikers in the company, and his matchup with Jan was sure to feature an interesting mesh of styles. Let's talk a little Peter Jan. This guy's been red hot. Jan was accurate and powerful, while Sanhagen was fluid on the feet and had quite a few inches on his opponent in both height and reach. Short, powerful puncher versus a tall, rangy volume striker. That was the tale of the tape. These two athletes locked horn during the co-main event of UFC 267 with the interim title on the line, and the fight lived up to the hype and then some. Sanhagen utilized his length and movement in the first few rounds while the former champion invested in body kicks and eventually sent his opponent crashing to the canvas with a spinning back fist. Sanhagen was rattled, but only for a moment, and after picking himself up, he went right back to war. The fight progressed to the championship rounds, and Jan took over, landing the more significant shots and earning himself a unanimous decision victory, as well as the interim title. Sanhagen was bloodied up, 
but the contender kept going forward, lasting until the final horn and cementing his status as a fan favorite, as he had put on one hell of a fight with his partner. The two were awarded for their efforts with a post-fight bonus, and another masterclass was embellished in the history books of the bantamweight division. And that's all the credit to Jan because, you know, he, he hit me good. And um, I think I was just that mistake away from winning, to be honest. Um, I think round one, I for sure won. Round two was a lot closer than what the judges scored it, but uh, that was, you know, a debatable round three. I was winning all the way up until that last minute, and I wasn't getting tired. I was feeling good, and then uh, just, you know, got rocked, and then was kind of rocked for the rest of the fight. Number three. Alexander Volkanovsky versus Brian Ortega. After a bad loss to Max Holloway, Brian Ortega returned to the octagon at UFC Fight Night 180 with a stunning victory over the Korean Zombie, and he silenced the whisper of his supposed downfall as T-City had not lost a step after the Holloway fight. In fact, he was more defensively sound than ever, and he's ready for another shot at the title. Ortega's as tough as they come too, man. Yeah. Just, well, his jiu-jitsu is off the charts. Yeah. The stellar performance granted Ortega another shot at championship gold, and this time, he was up against the man who had dethroned Max Holloway. The new kingpin of the division was Alexander the Great Volkanovsky. For some reason, these two gentlemen engage in a war of words in the lead up to UFC 266. I just told him, okay, yeah, that, okay, you don't deserve this belt. You know, you don't deserve it. You know, you're unprofessional. You're a cheat. I didn't even know about that. I don't even know how that was under wraps for so long. How isn't that out there, you know? I mean, even the same as DJ Dillashaw. Dillashaw. What was said between you guys when you started to stare down? Basically, I was like, bro, like, what's up? You really got an issue. What's cracking? Like, like, tell me. You kind of say all these things, but like, man up. Look me in the eyes and just tell me what the is that you have against me. But even without the banter, the fight was intriguing and certain to deliver. The clash of styles was a big selling point. As while Volkanovski had the advantage on the feet, Ortega was perfectly capable of strangling whoever ended up on the ground with him. You rarely go wrong with a striker versus grappler matchup at the very top of the division. The stand-up portion of the fight was something to behold, but the grappling sequences were just as entertaining. Volkanovski did not think twice about engaging Ortega on the ground, and while TCD locked in a tight guillotine in the third round, the champion escaped the submission and continued delivering some vicious ground and pound. Volkanovski shrugged off a triangle choke in the very same round and carried the momentum, outlanding the challenger 2-1 and winning the fight by unanimous decision. Volkanovski was adamant about finishing Ortega throughout fight week, and while he was unable to do so, this fight propelled the Australian champion to new heights as the fight was a shoe-in for the Fight of the Year award. How Volkanovski survived the guillotine is something I will never understand. Number 4. Derek Lewis vs. Tai Tuivasa Derek Lewis is the knockout king, and not just in the heavyweight division, but the entire UFC overall. Many consider him a limited fighter in comparison to his peers, but there is no doubt that Lewis possesses the touch of death, and for all the talk about his below average cardio, his punches are potent all the way to the final round. The thing about Derek Lewis is he can always just land one punch. We, we had just got done saying that like 10 seconds. His impressive knockout over Chris Dawkins at UFC Fight Night 199 signaled a return to form for Lewis after his loss to Cyril Ghosn for the interim title. And for his next fight, UFC pitted him up against a fellow fan favorite and knockout artist, Tai Tuivasa. I'm coming to knock his ass out. I'm coming to do the same thing, bro. That's swing and bang then. How could you go wrong here? Tuivasa was started out as a top prospect upon his debut into the UFC, and while it took him some time to find his prime, the Australian native amassed a four-fight win streak coming into his fight with Lewis, and every victory was a knockout. The hype and excitement was at a fever pitch, and while Lewis had a stinker of a fight with Francis and Ganu a few years prior, nothing was going to dent this particular matchup. Lewis and Tuivasa threw caution to the wind and slugged it out from the opening bell, exchanging heavy blows from the get-go with little to no regard for defense. Tuivasa injured a number of hellacious shots, both on the feet and then on the ground. But as the fight progressed, Tuivasa was the one who found the opening for the knockout blow as a vicious elbow found the mark and Tuivasa walked off as Lewis collapsed to the canvas. As I've said in a recent video, this encounter was a passing of the torch between the two heavyweight brawlers, and with a knockout like that, Tuivasa truly etched his name as one of the most terrifying knockout artists in today's heavyweight division. Number 5. 
Gilbert Burns versus Hamzat Chemaev. Hamzat Chemaev is a phenom unlike anything else we have witnessed in combat sports. Hamzat has this persona, almost like Superman. Like he can walk on water. Like he can walk through the opposition. Like no man alive can challenge him at all. Habib and Jones were notable outliers among their peers, but Chemaev was virtually superhuman for a period of time. The Swedish fighter had drawn early comparison to lightweight king Habib Nurmagomedov, but somehow Chemaev was even more dominant than the most dominant athlete in the sport. In four fights, he had injured just two blows and in spite of a bad bout with COVID-19 that led him to a potential retirement, Bors returned to the octagon at UFC 267 and basically handled Li Jingliang like a child. Many already considered him the uncrowned champion after his victory over Jing Liang, but before Danny White could put him up against the likes of Usman and Covington, Chemai was given a massive test in the form of Gilbert Burns. Burns was ranked number two in the world, and he served as the first true test for the undefeated fighter. UFC 273 featured two championship fights, but the match between Gilbert Burns and Hamza Chemai was the people's main event, as Burns himself had pointed out. We are the, the, the real main event. No, no disrespect to the champions, for sure. Sorry, Volkanovski. But yeah, I think we're the, we're the people's main event. Chemaev and Burns talked back and forth during the pre-fight press conference, intensifying the already anticipated matchup. I feel it's in there. I said to him yesterday, show his power. He couldn't show that. He said, I'll show you last Saturday and he turned around, you know. And when these two came across each other in the center of the octagon, it was a fight for the ages. Gilbert truly tested Chemaev like no one else and pushed him to the limits. The former title contender was knocked down the first round, but he was not done not by a long shot. He retaliated by knocking down the undefeated fighter for the first time in his career. However, Hamza Chemaev demonstrated true grit and the heart of a champion, firing back at his foe as soon as he picked himself up from the ground. The wild brawl lasted all the way to the final bell, and in a fight like this, both of these wars were absolute winners. Dana White himself thought so, as he awarded Burns with his win money, in addition to the fight of the night honors. And if I gotta tell you what the fight of the night is, you shouldn't be here. The back and forth slugfest was a fight of the year contender, but more importantly, this particular barn burner was the true breakout fight for Chemaev, and within a few years from now, we will look back at this contest as a star-making performance. Thankfully, fight fans have had no shortage of barn burners in the past few years, but the aforementioned matchups were just a class apart. Sending the crowd home happy is the goal of any and every entertainment spectacle. And these fights sent us home happy, hyped, and then some. But that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed and a big thank you for the precious minute you've allowed me. As always, I gotta bounce. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. And when you fail five, six, seven, eight times in a row, that confidence is shot. So getting back in the octagon like that is, is dangerous. It's dangerous. If you don't think you're an animal, if you don't think you can do it all, well, you're walking... You're, you're a dead man walking.